Entering the Lama pit area, team manager Cunningham and Duntoff exit the lead Corvette in front of the Chevrolet pits with space provided for the number six Jaguar and the numbers one, two, and three Corvettes. one of the driver positioning circles for the famed Le Mans running start. One of the Corvettes pulls out for a preliminary course inspection. Under the Dunlop Bridge. past one of the notorious corner sandbanks of Le Mans. And on to the long Mulsan Strait, where traffic is as usual, 364 days of the year. Technical inspection, always a controversial part of the carnival that is Le Mans. Pre-race spectators look on as cars are scrutinized. Bob Grossman nervously awaits his turn with the inspectors with the number one car. It's race day. Thousands upon thousands of spectators and seemingly every police officer in France mill about the race cars prior to the 4 o'clock p.m. starting time. The Corvette team sits proudly awaiting the command of their drivers. Pre-race festivities includes a parade of Chevrolets, a last-minute strategy meeting between Duntoff, Cunningham, and the Corvette drivers. And the race is on. The Corvettes get away cleanly. The aluminum head motors had been used for testing at Le Mans, but it was feared they would not withstand the brutal punishment of a 24-hour race. So cast iron heads with larger valves were installed for the race itself. A fourth Corvette entered by the U.S. team Camarati was driven by Lilly and Gamble. The team also fielded three birdcage Maseratis. Competitors flash by a gaggle of gendarmes. The Camarati Corvette finished an unofficial tenth, but was not awarded that position because it did not complete the minimum number of laps. The Cunningham Jaguar into the pits for inspection and driver change. About two hours into the race, Le Mans was attacked by a torrential rainstorm. Kimberly and the number one Corvette, having completed some 32 laps, crashed in the poor weather. The car caught fire due to the use of a combustible solution in the windshield cleaner tank. The solution leaked onto the hot headers, resulting in the fire. Pit action was always frantic at Le Mans, particularly since the rules allowed only two people to attend the car at one time. Here we see Corvette mechanic Bob Zimmerman changing tires and adjusting brake drums as his colleague tops off the oil tank. Oil, water, or fuel could only be added after a minimum of 25 laps had been completed between stops. Here, two course inspection officials apply a seal to the oil filler cap as Zimmerman struggles to change tires. Briggs Cunningham, unable to assist materially, orchestrates his pit crew. Meanwhile, out on the racetrack, Ferrari and Aston Martin dominated the race. At one point, car number three lost coolant, and because of the 25-lap minimum liquid adding rule, could not refill. 
So American ingenuity came to the fore, and for the next 25 laps, car number three pulled into the pits each lap and received a cold water and ice bath until it could again have its radiator replenished. After the checkered flag, here are the ravages of racing. The number two Thompson Windridge car completed 207 laps before retiring at 11.15 Sunday morning. It reached speeds of 151 miles per hour. The number three car of Finch and Grossman finished first in GT and eighth overall, its position boosted by Finch's extraordinary driving efforts in the rain. Of the 25 cars that completed the 24 hours, only Ferrari, Aston Martin, and Corvette appeared in the top 10.